on the eclipse later in the show, but we start this morning with an issue impacting our hometowns. You may recall last month in Davenport, a woman was hit in a crosswalk and was seriously injured. Police eventually tracked down and arrested the driver of the tow truck. Police say hit her. Now, according to police, the driver was on the phone around the time of the crash. And this month is National Distracted Driving Awareness Month. Law enforcement on both sides of the river are focusing on this. There. For Iowa State Patrol, the focus is no one is a good distracted driver. In Whiteside County, the sheriff's office is asking drivers to, quote, drop it and drive. Now, back in 2022, Iowa law enforcement cited 1,400 drivers for using an electronic device while driving. But last year, over 9,000 were cited. This week, we spoke with the chief for the Governor's Traffic Safety Bureau in Iowa and an Iowa State Patrol trooper about what is one of the leading causes of crashes in the bi-state. Joining us now is Bureau Chief Brett Jepkes and Trooper Luke Hank. Gentlemen, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us this week. Of thank course. you, John. We appreciate it. Of course. Let's um, start here with kind of the, the message and the focus and maybe the title of, of your campaign this year, and it's that no one is a good distracted driver. Uh, maybe that's self-explanatory, but can you kind of tell me what that means? Yeah, it's quite interesting to us. We conducted... Uh, market research, talked to a lot of Iowans about uh, traffic safety, and uh, the common sentiment we found from uh, people that we talked to all over the state is that uh, they think they're good at it. They think that uh, even though they're driving, that they've uh, mastered the skill of driving while they're distracted and driving while using their phone. And it's, um, it was uh, shocking to us to find that out from uh, from people all over the state. And so we, we wanted to uh, craft a message to to try to um, influence them that uh, that that it's not safe and and we need to put our phones down. We need to be very focused on driving. Yeah, let's talk about that survey uh, that y'all did. Um, that I mean, that was more than half of people said um, not only what you just said, but that they they do it always or or a lot of the time. Yeah, and I, I think. I think a lot of us, uh, you know, we know that people are using their cell phones while they drive, you know, but, uh, you know, an Iowa State Fair survey that we conducted, um, 1,450 Iowans, 51% of them, uh, they admit they almost always or sometimes use their cell phone when they're driving. But I think what's even uh, more astonishing is that even though they admit to driving, they, they think there should be stronger laws that prevent people from doing that. But 85% of the people we talk to think there needs to be a stronger law to, to encourage drivers and to well, mandate that they you know, aren't able to use a cell phone while they drive. What do you see out there as you are patrolling uh, and doing your work? I, I believe as a total, yes, we see a lot of a lot more distracted driving. Uh, you know, with the cell phones being a mainstream thing, now everybody has one, everybody's using one. You know, it's basically like a small computer that you carry in your pocket that seems to be the biggest distraction uh, and, and you see it all the time. You also have, you know, your pets on your lap, on people's laps, a few people are eating while they're driving, um, they're grooming themselves. All those things are distractions as well. But I think the, the most uh, significant one is definitely cell phones. I, I think we're all human and we can all sort of understand the idea of, of being distracted by any one of these things. Um, but when you are interacting with folks, um, are you getting a sense that um, they knew they were distracted, but just, you know, chose to kind of maybe do something anyway? Or do you get a sense that they didn't actually feel they were that distracted? A little bit of both to where some people are more uh, along the lines of it, it was something real quick. I just had to send a message real quick. I just had to reply. Uh, you know, I'm running late. I need to tell somebody that I that I'll be there late, or uh, some people just have to be on their phone all the time, or they think that they need to be. Uh, and, you know, I'm no, no different that, that with my job, I spend a lot of time on my phone, but I certainly don't when I'm driving. I just uh, take that opportunity to co concentrate on the road ahead of me. And, uh, you know, because it's, it's not just my life, it's somebody else's life out there next to me driving on the road. As you, uh, if, if you're making a, a traffic stop, uh, in particular, it's related to distracted driving. Um, obviously, you have to choose your words and your approach and your tone very carefully for each situation. 
how do you approach these situations so that you make a connection with uh, the driver, but also communicate maybe the gravity of, of some behavior that you observed uh, that you that you need to see be different? It's more to me maybe about education on on uh, how quickly things happen on the road when we're traveling, you know, that 65, 70 mile an hour speed limit, how fast we're moving. If we look down at our phones for say five seconds, we're going to move a, a great distance. I'll explain it to people like that. Um, like I said before, you know, on the interstate system or anywhere else, you always have more people around you. So it's not just about you and it's not just about a driver and themselves and their, their life and where they need to be uh, or, what they need on their phone or distractions. It's about the people next to them. It's that family that's driving next to them. Uh, it's those kids in that back seat. It's, you know, it's that school bus full of children. It's, uh, it's the big semis next to them. You just, there's such a small margin of error for any of those things when it comes to roadways in Iowa. Imagine when any of us are uh, tasked with doing something, we can sometimes be discouraged when we don't see the results uh, that we hope for. Um, what results would be encouraging to you? Well, we're always looking at how many people are seriously injured or killed in car crashes every year. Um, you know, last year, um, far too many people uh, were dying on Iowa's roadways. Um, zero fatalities is really something that we would love to see, that people are able to enjoy moving up and down the roadway and not being killed. You know, the reality is that we have far more than that. Uh, last year, and 377 people were killed on Iowa's roadways. Uh, and so we're really trying to kind of have a measured approach to that, having a goal of, of being under 300. Uh, but even then, you know, the people that, that were killed in crashes, the, the 300, if we were to get to that level, um, it, it's still too many. It's still devastating to people's lives. So we just really want to see a, a downward trend. We want to see that uh, uh, that we are saving lives and making a difference on Iowa's roadways. Um, what would encourage you uh, in terms of what you're seeing out there that would make you feel like, hey, folks are are listening to our message here and, um, you know, and they're responding in, in the way you'd like them to respond? You know, I, I would like to see the law um, cleaned up just a little bit to make it, to make it, um, a more clear-cut violation for us uh, as it sits right now. People can can make excuses and, and make reasons as to why they were on the phone. And, you know, depending on what a judge says, it, it could kind of go either way. That would be the biggest thing for me, uh, would be a, a tightening up in that, um, you know, in the state house on the actual violation itself. Brett Jepkes, Luke Hang, thank you to the both of you for taking the time uh, to talk with us this week. Thank you.